don't know. Well, anyway, it's not the bestest, but I am going to sell it today anyway. Or not. I'm just going to wrap the uh, tractor around the uh, good grief. I've definitely messed this up. And this is farm sim issues where you hit something and whatever it is you're driving moves in such a way that it doesn't matter if you go forwards or backwards, you're never going to get it out of there. Anyway, we're heading down to the store, so we will do that. I guess this is going to take about three trips, and I guess the, uh, why did you stop? Because there's a post there, I need to replace the posts on the edge of this field. Well, we didn't do too badly, we got a fair distance. Okay, so sell stuff. Let's do the selling of the stuff. Come on, tractor. I will do it from the cab because it's summer. It's easier to see under the trees. So, yes, I think. I think on Monday I mentioned I finished the first big planter for Mrs. Osa. I had to... No, I did that on Friday, so I probably did mention it last week. Um, I assembled it up on the deck so that uh, I wouldn't have to carry it upstairs. I've still got to carry the small one up, and it is mighty heavy. Um, but having left it up on the deck in 80 degree temperatures, the wood dried out. So uh, Thursday, I think we got Teenage Osa to uh, paint it with a wood finish, exterior wood finish, so that um, hopefully it won't shrivel up much more. Um, but where the boards were flush, there is daylight between them so uh, that's a little unfortunate but uh, we're gonna line it with a um, weed barrier plastic sheet and then put dirt in it so it's not like they're going to leak it's just that they look a little bit unfortunate or that one does Next one, I'm going to assemble that. Mm, probably not today. Temperatures are up at 87, 88 today. So I, once I'm done with this, I will probably go and finish cut the boards to the length I need them to be and just have everything ready to screw together. I'll probably fashion the legs because those uh, two boards screw together at 90 degrees. I can do them in the basement and they're not too heavy to carry upstairs. But then once I've done that, everything else will be assembled on the deck. And with any luck, I will be able to get Teenage Osa to um, I just occurred to me, I am going to the right place, aren't I? Yes. Oh, I drive my car. Yeah, I'll probably assemble them one night this week and 
have Teenage Osa um, paint it immediately so that it doesn't shrivel. Part of the other problem was I hadn't cut the widths. I'd, I'd intended to cut the widths to four board. Um, yeah, I'm putting two boards on each side and one and four along the bottom. And I hadn't cut the width spacers or end pieces exactly four boards wide. They were a little bit too narrow, sadly. So uh, I had to go and trim one of those and you know, table saws at the other end of the uh, basement and there's a load of crap in the way. So I had to uh, go down and rearrange the basement so I could get at the table saw so I could actually cut the the strip off the edge and literally half a centimeter was all that's needed although maybe if I'd uh, unscrewed all the boards and then shuffled them over due to uh, shrinkage they probably would have all fit but that's what it is so this looking oh well, it's good money and I do have it tipping out of the uh, grain doors so tip is slow there we go 34,000 how are we doing on diesel we are hmm. I might have to uh, fill up the diesel tanks at the yards again. I also might want to take the uh, tanker down to the lake. Drop 25,000 litres in the garden. That's a better view. And of course using the uh, the arable yard to store our grains does mean that uh, this is quite a long trip comparatively. I would like to get a truck for doing this sort of thing just keep the grain carts for field work because tr trucks go a bit quicker but the only trucks I've been able to find are not rated for um, weight fill limits so you can just unload anything into the truck and it will take it by volume. Uh, so, yeah, if you get a 45,000 litre truck, it'll take 45,000 litres of, soy, of soybeans or canola, which are fairly light. Or it'll take 45,000 litres of stone, which is quite a bit heavier. Uh, this trailer will take, I think it's about 30,000 litres little over 30,000 litres. It'll take a maximum volume of barley and canola and soybeans. It will not take maximum volume of wheat, which is a little heavier than barley. And it'll take about 58% volume in stones, because stones are significantly heavier. Now the thing is that um, the game itself does um, 
have an issue with overloading. Um, if you put too much stuff in in a in a trailer, it gets completely unmanageable, and you'll see that. Um, on Dagawin's videos, Dagawin doesn't generally play with uh, weight fill limits. So he will fill up the trailer and he will fill it up by volume. And some of those trailers will take a lot of volume and uh, then they start dancing all over the place because there's too much weight in them for. Um, the axles and everything else and the graphic yeah while the get while it's he's not limited by weight volume or sorry by weight capacity um, the game is still playing as if you had a weight capacity limit and the more weight on the back of the vehicle the more unmanageable the load gets um, worker go so it's really the compensation of the the tires and the rear suspension on the trailer that's kind of making a limit there and if you've got too much weight for those the tires start sinking into the ground the trailer becomes unstable um, and you know, bad things can happen but if you play with the fill limit then it seems, yeah, there seems to be some form of comp yeah, restriction there that you don't end up in a graphically unstable or game physics unstable situation. Same, yeah, uh, the, similarly, it's one of the reasons why I've started running with a front weight almost all of the time, except when I want to attach something to the front of the vehicle, is because if you've got too much weight on that hitch it lifts it reduces the weight on the front wheels and the vehicle becomes unstable and unable to steer because there's not enough weight on the tires so this tractor permanently attached to a weight except when I'm mowing because I want the front mower and the two rear mowers attached so yeah the front attacher becomes used for something else same with the fent in fact with the fent um, i am i'm using the blah 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 blah, blah um, the isaria um, crop sensor when i'm spraying but once the spraying is done, I'm putting a weight on the front of it just because it makes the vehicle a little bit more stable and the steering a little bit more reliable. Um, don't have to worry about that on the Massey because it doesn't have a three point at the front. It just has the Massey standard weight, whatever that is. So worker has finished again and as I said I'm gonna have to go and drive around the field and pick up any remaining weed fortunately weeds like rocks um, you just have to eliminate them so if we look at the field and there are no patches of weed on the field then the worker did an adequate job you don't have to cover 100% of the field you just have to remove 100% of the weeds and they're patchy. I did like that in Farm Sim 19 with, uh, why did we use that? Oh, Realismus is Seasons. The weeds were patchy. They didn't cover the entire field. The problem was that workers didn't know that. So in Farm Sim 19, when you put a weeder on the field, the worker would look for weeds in front of him, and if he can't see them, then he'll be like, well, there's no work to do. Um, if you moved to a patch of weeds, he would clear that patch of weeds and then stop because he can't see any more weeds in front of him. 
at least with Farm Sim 22, we um, the workers will run the weeder over the field even if there's no weeds directly in front of them. And that's working, so let's go back to this guy. And do this again. Okay, worker, go. So today we're really looking at own farm tasks. June 2 will probably be contracts. I have no idea what contracts are out there this month. There are... Ooh. Bunch of good sized bailing contracts. That's all there is. There's just bailing contracts. And most of them appear to be for hay. Now we have done hay contracts in the past. I, I prefer silage contracts because they're worth more. Um, I guess we can go back to the John Deere. It's done. And when we go get the bale trailer, I will uh, show you where all our bales from the last contract series was. I'm going to fill this up, though. And this will cost us a bit. How's... Yeah, conditions not too bad. Ninety-one percent. Trailers down to seventy-one. There we go. Uh, Twelve hundred cost. That's not too bad, I guess. Suppose that's a uh, thousand liters of soybeans. Just paid for that. Not even. That's still. Oops. But I think if I can manage the cow food, and now I've figured out a good cheap way of doing it. If I can manage the cow food, I think we've hit the sort of the easy point of this playthrough. Things are going to get much easier because our income is going to be quite significantly increased so as thing you know as things progress we're going to buy more fields in the year we're going to upgrade equipment at a faster rate um, i probably not well i don't know i was going to say probably not getting any new equipment this year trying to think what we what we really don't have there well, I've got a couple of vehicles leased so we've got the um, the milk tanker the milk truck um, needs to be paid off I've got the baler wrapper needs to be paid off um, oh, there's a couple of other things as well that need to get paid off I'll look at that when we start filling up with stuff. Last of the soybeans. But uh, it looks like first of the month is the time that the cows are desperate for food. So uh, that's probably going to be a thing going forwards which generally pushes me out to I'll do contracts on on second day of the month day two um, and 
uh, what's the stuff we do? Day three, I tend to do sell the perishables. And then when the farm gets busy and it's sort of, well, I've got three days worth of harvesting to do, then we're not doing contracts on those days. And I have to make time to sell the perishables. But normally harvesting is, well, I miss that. Uh, harvesting is usually long days in the year, so there's ample time to do all the things that we need to. Okay, there we go. 18,000 litres. Uh, let's go back, check the uh, this dude. He seems to be doing a relatively good job for the most part. As I said, the only problem is, is we won't get a 99% on the uh, um, on the uh, environmental score. That's fine. Okay, that's probably going to let us get out of there. So, 60%, that's actually not too bad. 2.6 uh, trailer loads. And we still have the small, um, what's it, La Campania. Uh, trailer as well. I haven't got rid of that yet. I'm pretty. The thing is, is I'm buying so much used equipment, and we're so much not putting hours on anything that doesn't have an engine in it that um, it's really no big deal. Um, yeah. Why do I want to sell a trailer when? So yeah. There's. I've got the barn space. And it might come in useful. So we can keep it. And yeah, the smaller trailer is um, is tailor fit for sort of 250 horsepower tractors. So it's a good trailer for the Fence 700. Um, and so if I'm using the big trailer on this tractor, then that smaller one is still available for other tasks. Especially if we're doing multi-field harvesting. We've only got one harvester, but yeah. Or it allows me to you know, cart 50,000 litres at a time rather than 30,000 litres at a time. see wider than the uh, the mirrors. I could change field of view I suppose that would allow me to see round the mirrors a little. I never, never really bothered messing with field of view so 27 degrees that's a hot day in June in, in the UK. I was watching Disturbed Simulations um, Maypole series this morning and he was saying he's, he's figured out how to adjust the weather. So originally when, when the game started it was sort of um, here's a crop calendar and a lot of people were saying that's not really the crop calendar for Central Europe. Um, probably was Central Europe. But you know, um, you can plant winter wheat and spring wheat, and giants only gave us the ability to plant winter wheat. So you know, it was sort of there are more planting seasons, there are longer harvesting seasons, there are different harvesting seasons, depending where you are in the world. So people quickly figured out how to tailor the crop calendar to meet your. Um, 
No, oh, we don't have 70% on the train. Tipper. Oh, we're going to have And that's good enough. So, where is it? Crop calendar. That's this one. So, if you look in base game, you're planting these four crops around here. You're harvesting them here. There is no planting over here. Um, but, you know, this is colloquially known as the UK crop calendar, which lets you do something typically more UK-like. Well, apparently, this also has modifications as well. So you can tailor the weather based on the local weather patterns. So you're not going to end up playing on a UK map with temperatures 35 degrees for the entirety of summer because that's generally unrealistic you're kind of looking end of july beginning of august it gets crazy hot and dry did you have to stop there and um disturb simulations has figured out the uh the tables for that so he's working on or he's helping a mapper with his new map with I think the, the the map has got the crop calendar down, but he's giving him a weather pattern more akin to um, the you know, UK East Anglia area, which is kind of fun to know. I have no idea if you. I have no idea if this map has its weather patterns tailored to where it's nominally supposed to be. I mean, all we know is this is somewhere in Ireland, probably Southern Ireland, or, yeah, the, the country of uh, Ireland. I can't remember. There's a way to say it, because you've got Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom, and then you've got the uh, 